Howdy. How's it going, everybody? Hey, Verm, Seth, New York City, Maps. Good to see some new folks and some f names that are getting familiar now, I guess. I was, uh, I was curious who would show up. I had to move, move the date this week um, to be on, uh, on Thursday, both because I had another thing I had to do, but also just out of curiosity to see, um, see how it goes. Yeah, Verma, a tweet should have gone out at 7.01. I should actually check to make sure that happened. But uh, yeah, something should have gone out um, when I went live. Let's check. Success. Yeah, so putting it out on all socials and we'll see uh, how that is. So curious in seeing who, who shows up on a, on a Thursday. And I think I, I, I did hear from some folks that said that uh, Friday is more challenging at times, just given, uh, given Friday things. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Anyone who turn, turned up here so far, Thursday, Friday, have any difference for you really? I'm hoping to try and do this uh, this weekly thing. Hi, G. Good to see you. How's everybody's week going? You get hammered by this storm over the weekend too. Got like a foot of snow here and negative six on Saturday. I haven't been birding in a while, I have to admit. But okay, cool. Thanks, Maps. Oh yeah, Seth, I, I paint birds. Yeah, she's she's cool. I've actually um I my day job has overlapped with uh her where she worked in the past as well. Um so it's uh I I know Liz a little bit, but I didn't realize until recently um how much she's doing here. Verm actually uh tipped me off to uh to her. And yeah, it's super cool. Uh, I'm gonna try and connect and and network uh, sometime. Oh, well, thanks Thanks for jumping over, Seth. Yeah, I should, that's actually a good point. I should stream at times where she's not. There's only a few birder folks out, out there, so I shouldn't try and overlap with the, the few that exist. That's a good point. Um, yeah, no birding a G. Me, me, me neither. I, uh, looking forward to some migration. Um, I don't know, folks, might remember last week seeing the purple martins migrating already that always gives me hope at this time of year but blackbirds will be on their way soon and waterfowl and stuff like that will be happening so should be good um but today hoping to do another like this weekend birds review a little bit of weekend forecasty thing and then um, also look at some of the gear so i've been pulling together a gear set for the like field birding side of things that I'm really curious in diving into. Um, so come spring and come birds, actually going out and doing some some field stuff, which is much more technically complicated, um, but I also think fun. At least for me, that's what that's what I'm super stoked on, uh, just to see how that how that'll actually play out. Um, so I have some some gear and stuff we can look at. Curious folks' thoughts and. Uh, and then I have a new uh, a new toy for, for the rig that I got that I actually haven't opened yet. So it'll be like a, a showing slash unboxing. So that should be fun. Um, yeah, winter and rain gear. That'll, I'm not sure if the tech is at a spot right now where you could actually stream in winter and rain gear. Or like in snow and sleet and all that rain and grossness. I just... I don't think the stuff barely exists to do it non-waterproof, and I don't think it does waterproof, but maybe someone more creative than me. I'll be curious what you all think. So should be good. Cool. Thanks, Seth. And Seth, you were uh, you were getting started with, with some of your uh, streaming as well, right? You were going to try something? It's cool seeing more folks uh, giving something a whirl. Yeah, cold alone definitely makes things tough. Yeah, it's supposed to be negative seven Fahrenheit again here this weekend or something like that. Not not a fan really. Um cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Seth, uh, if you want to drop your channel in here, um anyone who's curious in another 
person who's trying out birding and streaming, go uh, go give Seth a follow. Be cool. I love watching winter on TV from California. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Good improvement. Okay. Let's dive in. So I, I enjoy going through my life list from today. So we'll start off with that and then dive into the weekly stuff. Let's see how this looks. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Seth. Yeah, go give... Go give them a follow if uh, folks are curious for more birding streaming. Um, cool, yeah. So again, this is uh, this is a link that I just like looking at this on on eBird. It's kind of fun. Um, so anybody can go to this link and see what you've seen on today's date forever, which is kind of fun. So 169 species, not too bad. But I I took a quick quick run through earlier. Oh yeah, new tripod head is definitely important. Um, and I found one bird on here. So been in New York last few uh, last few winters by now. Back from any interesting winter travel by now. Winter break in South Carolina, 2012. But the real fun stuff. Um, get to the pelagic in a moment. This, which was one of my favorite birds of all time. I always like going back and looking at old old comments as well. I think this captures how I felt and how I still still feel as well. Um, that what was it? This was two thousand and nine. Thirteen years ago today, I was looking at an ivory gull, and that was that was a good day. And uh, we talked about ivory gulls last week too, because there was this young one that was hanging out in um, uh, Duluth, Minnesota. And I've never seen a young one. I've only seen adults. And so this bird actually was hanging out in a parking lot in uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts. And um, I spent a fair amount of time in Plymouth birding, but where I lived is about an hour away. And I distinctly remember this was on inauguration day um, for Barack Obama. And for some for some reason that was happening and going down and then got this call that there is an ivory gull at this place that I checked all the time right then. And it was like the, a huge snowstorm, hours drive through Boston, through the city, traffic, rush hour, all that. And it was like, we're going. So um, a friend of mine picked me up and we, we shot down there and uh, it was eating this dead pigeon in a parking lot. It was just completely tame, just like walking around 10, 15 feet away. It was amazing. Um, and uh, we just hung around there in the snow until um, until the sunset, basically. And uh, what was really cool was that it ended up sticking around for like a week, I think, or more. And so I, I just went and saw this bird almost every day um, for a week, uh, which was incredible. Um, so I've only seen two individual ivory gulls, but I got to see them a bunch of times, so... I, I, again, I don't know what it is. They're just, they're so perfect. There's just something about it. It's just black and white and a little bit of color in the bill, but hmm, what a creature. So that was a pretty cool memory to see today. Oh, I didn't get the California one. That was too bad. Where, was that the, was that the Salton Sea? Was that, was that a Ross's there? There was something really weird at the Salton Sea, right? One of the Arctic gulls. Am I totally misremembering that? Anyway, pretty incredible bird. Um, so that was fun. Okay, that was the Rosses. Remember one of them was that down there. So that was pretty fun. Um, and then 12 years ago today, I was on a pelagic off of um, Peru, which was pretty cool. Um, and so kind of fun going through just huge, huge numbers of Jaegers. You have swallow-tailed gulls mixed in with the, the Sabins gulls there. These swallow-tailed are pretty cool. <laughs> Wondering if the ivory gull smells weird. There's only one way to find out. We'll have to, we'll have to check them out. Some birds actually do have smells. Um, so I, the only ones I've encountered are uh, in hand. Um, so I've, I've done a lot of bird banding 
and uh, one of one of the birds that has a smell in hand is a brown creeper because uh, they'll spend so much time uh, kind of on the trunks of uh, pine trees that sometimes the bellies of brown creepers will smell piney from the sap that they rub up against. Um, so brown creeper is one. Uh, rough-legged hawks will often, s- their feet will smell like spruce trees because they spend, they perch on spruce tops. Um, so I've heard from banders uh, that, that they smell like spruce trees, which is pretty cool. And then, um, what is it, parakeet auklets, I think, one of the alcids in... Um, the uh up in the bering sea and north pacific smell like tangerines i'm not i'm not sure why but someone needs to smell an ivory gull now that's the key i like this um but yeah so these are just like flying around with the sabin skulls off of peru which is pretty cool (laughs) gotta smell them all exactly (laughs) um which is pretty fun and Franklin, it's interesting too having like Franklin skulls, a bunch of birds like this wintering down there. Inca terns are around in the thousands, uh, which is pretty cool. Seeing penguins on a pelagic, just like ducks, albatrosses. It's a fun day. American goldfinch just smell like maple syrup. Are you serious, Drew? Are you just are you, are you just messing? That should be like Canada warbler or something, right? I wonder if any of the Quebec folks are here today. I feel like they should give us the authoritative uh, read on what birds smell like maple syrup. And these are terrible photos. Cool birds. That's awesome. Got all those Peruvian boobies. Cool birds. Peruvian pelican too. This is a, a cool bird that I'd never really thought about till till being there. They're basically just like a gigantic brown pelican. Um, I, I don't I don't know. They almost never co-occur, but they're like almost I don't know 50, 80 percent bigger than a brown pelican. It's like you think pelicans are big. Peruvian pelicans are just insane. Pretty cool. Common eiders musk. Interesting. Like the adults or the chicks or all of them. Didn't expect to be talking about bird smells today. I think that's about it for the interesting things on this day. Other than that, it's mostly run of the mill stuff. I think, uh, I think Drew, you were here. This was that, um, that slady backed gull that was hanging around at the Oswego River that we spent all day looking for and didn't find. Oh, summer on Stratton. That's cool. I, I, I spent a weekend on Stratton once. Um, that's a cool spot off of Southern Maine for folks who aren't familiar with it. It's like got a, a massive tern colony, um, then a pond that has a bunch of ducks breeding on it, and then a heronry right next to that. So you kind of have all of it next to each other. It's a pretty fun spot. Okay, enough of the life list. Um, cool, well, let's dive into the this week stuff. Um, and start with um, just looking at some of the top photos from the last week. I always enjoy doing this. It's a fun way to see what's going on. Um, th- this shot is super impressive. Man, there's something about, to move it down a little bit, if I can do that, yeah. It's just something about uh, an Iceland gull wingtip. Maybe it's just me, but they look really nice. Pretty cool. It's a really nice shot. I need to move my um, camera. Brian Stalls, nice shot. Okay, so we got red pole. Yeah, folks have been seeing red poles wherever you are. There, there are, I mean, hundreds of thousands, like 400,000 red poles flew south past Duluth and Quebec this year. But I feel like no one's seeing tons, but people are seeing scattered numbers, maybe. I don't know if anyone's been seeing them. 
Never seen a red pull? You haven't seen a red pull yet. Someday you will red pull. Oh man, Chlorophonius. Who'd have thunk these are finches? It's pretty crazy. Imagine if we had, uh, yeah, imagine if instead of big flocks of red poles or gold finches or something, you had 400,000 Chlorophonias flying by. I'd be down for that. Oh, I really want to go here for just to photograph this bird, actually. I've never, has anyone here ever been to Barnegat? I, I haven't been to, to that spot in New Jersey, but man, it looks like Harlequin ducks just ham it up there. Yeah, look at this. That is super cool. Barnegat is amazing. Is it, uh, is it pretty easy to navigate, get to know? Oh man, what a bird. This is just one of the best birds ever. Like, look at that thing. Man. If every bird was like this, the world would be a better place. They're so cool. Long walk, but worth it. Sweet. I'm always down for a long walk. I'll do that at some point. I really like the... Uh, just the setup too, like it seems like it's a perfect photography angle, cool background on the on the mussels or on the water. I'll have to check that out. Oh, I love purple sandpipers too. This is pretty crazy. Mid-January Franklin's call in Illinois that's in full breeding alternate plumage. That is pretty cool. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder, did it arrive in? Interesting. I wonder if it arrived in uh, this kind of plumage. Let's see, let's figure this out. Let's go to Franklin Skull and then search for Will County, Illinois. Go to photos. 16 January, 18 January. Yeah, it's just full. Well, it's even got pink on it. Look at that. It's a bird that is on the wrong hemisphere and in the wrong plumage. That's pretty cool. Birds, man. They do all sorts of stuff. What else we got going on? Black vulture. Okay, informal poll. How do people feel about black vultures? I feel like some people hate black vultures. I think they're really cool. I think they're super impressive. Thumbs up or thumbs down on, on black vultures. Man, I'm excited. It uh, Once they get affiliate on, on here, then uh, can actually run polls that everybody can, can vote on. And I'm gonna have way, way too much fun with that. Um, and Drew, you're going to have to run all the polls because you're the mod. So exciting times ahead. Good. Everybody loves them. F full on black vulture team here. They're so cool. And they're one of the most successful birds ever, I'd say. Adorable black vultures are the best ones. Oh, speaking of adorable, these birds are so cool. Where'd you see your black vultures, uh, green herring? I love this bird so much. Yeah, I was hoping for a flock picture. The, these these Pratt and Coles are, there's like something about them that's almost like prairie dog-like to me in like an endearing way. I don't, I don't know if it's just me, but like, couldn't, if you like squint at this, I think this could totally just be like a prairie dog colony. And they're so cool. South, Southern and Southeastern Asia. Seen them in Thailand. They're so cool. Oh, Northern Virginia. Nice. Okay. I'm not in Doc's Discord. I should get in there, though. This looks like a nice classic shot. Oh, Black Skimmer. That's a great bird. Yeah, there's a lot of black vultures in Florida. And it's amazing, too, once you go farther south, just how many there are in the world. Nice shot here. 
watermark though. It's a bummer. Weeders are nice too. Okay, one more, one more page, one more page. Oh, hey, Sulfuratus, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Sorry, uh, time zone doesn't work. I, I'm hoping to do, um, well, once I start, I, I will be doing some like live birding that's obviously gonna be in mornings. Um, so I figure the morning birding should work for both folks in um, the Americas as well as for EU evenings. Um, so I'm not sure if that's your time zone, Sulfuratus, but looking forward to having uh, more times for more folks. Yeah, yeah. Europe's Europe's late now. Thanks for thanks for staying up. Oh, that's a cool shot. Great crowned rosy finch, black rosy finch. It's a pretty incredible bird too. Long-eared owl. That's a nice bird. Cause a lot of drama. Oh, torrent duck. These things. This is another bird that looks fake. Ducks are good. I think ducks keep coming up. We we got to do a duck tier list. I'll, I'll to uh, I'll have to make that at, uh, on whatever it is tier list dot, dot com or whatever it is, and we'll have to go through and do a duck tier list. Cause that one's that's an S tier duck right there. Oh, northern hawk owls. I wonder if some are starting to show up. I haven't seen many photographed this winter yet. It's an incredible bird. Ooh, ooh, people throwing out the word best. The best duck. Best is bold. You might be right. Okay, well, there's some of the top photos of the last seven days. Um, super cool to see. If folks want to look at any more, just posted the link in chat. I hope duck tier list will get contentious. That's the whole point. Okay. Um, cool. So that's top photos. Then bird news. Um, there wasn't too much kind of bird news that I r found or ran into this week. Um, but uh, I would say the one, or I think of two things. Um, one folks might have seen, it was actually picked up by BBC News, which is always kind of kind of cool for bird stuff, is the uh, the bird fair, which uh, I'm curious if folks here have even heard of or encountered the bird fair, but I've always thought it was a pretty cool thing. Um, in uh, Sulfuratus, you've probably heard of it since it's definitely um, more well-known, I'd say, across, across Europe. Um, but this kind of annual gathering of bird-interested folks in the middle of England. And uh, the group that ran it for more than three decades said kind of in early COVID times that they were no longer going to run it. And uh, they just announced that uh, the person, um, Tim Appleton, whom I actually know, know well, Tim, Tim and Penny are great, um, him, him and his partner. Um, and uh, they're revitalizing the bird fair. So it's folks, I think, from like 160 countries or something like that um, get together for like a weekend um, and there are just massive, massive numbers of, of folks, um, that look, <laughs> that looks kind of like your average birding crowd, but there are, um, a bunch of different communities that do come together around that younger folks, stuff like that. Um, but it's a pretty cool thing. So I'll be curious to see how it, uh, how it kind of returns. Um, so a bit of interesting bird stuff. And then the, the other one that I found was this, this piece, uh, from Audubon, that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, talking about something that I never used, but I know I've, I've heard a bunch of folks talk about uh, the call-in rare bird alerts. And I, for folks who are newer to birding, you might have, I'd be curious if folks have ever heard of this either, um, that to get a rare bird alert, you didn't used to get an email in your inbox from eBird every, um, every hour or get a text alert on your WhatsApp or your group me up to the minute. Um, but you called in to some number where every day or week or something like that, someone would call and create a pre-recorded message 
that you would call in and some random person would like read out the rare birds of the week and it was like in real time and you had to like write down what it was all the information and if you didn't get it you had to call again and they'd go through it again one time and uh this is kind of interesting piece here um that audubon pulled together just talking about how this began in like the 50s and stuff and then um obviously as things are now they've they've kind of um died oh verm that's really funny under the number of loon species um yeah here we go the north american rare bird alert a pioneering bird hotline um and it's super interesting there's one apparently one widely used bird alert that still exists and i'm curious if anybody here can guess um who uses it and where where it is generally there might be more but there's one that this article points out that makes sense once you know it. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> boomers? Some boomers, but not just boomers. Sorry, I gulped loudly when I drank. Okay, doesn't look like anybody has the answer. I, I didn't either. Um, Amish birders. So there's actually a really big Amish birding community throughout like New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Wisconsin. Um, and the, the Amish don't use um, technology to the same degree that, that many do. I think there's, my understanding is there's variation in, um, in different, uh, yeah, and this might be news, yeah, self Rodas and, and others. Uh, there's actually a huge and super dedicated Amish um, and a plain folk is, I think, how they often refer to themselves. So Amish and Mennonite um, birding communities. And I, Drew, I know you know some of them in, in, in New York, definitely running them. And they're like really sharp. They're, they all have top tier optics. They all are picking things by sound, really good field birders. And uh, they have their own call and alert still. Um, and so it's pretty cool to, uh, to see that. And yeah, there you go. Folks will call and then they have ways to kind of work around the, uh, the options and make it happen. But it was pretty interesting. Yeah. So I thought this was super interesting. Um, 12 counties that make up this birding area have communal telephones where multiple families can share a single line via a wired receiver. Um, and so I guess they also are able to find a way around it with cell phones um, belonging to not them. And then anyway, super interesting. And uh, I, I just thought this is this is pretty fascinating um, that this this whole thing. Yeah, the ones who call you call from their driver's cell phones. So they're not allowed to own it, but allowed to use it occasionally. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I didn't read this and I hadn't heard this before. Birding is a wholesome alternative to more worldly and possibly wild activities that occur during a rumspringa. A lot of Amish kids learn to identify birds before they can walk. Man, imagine if that was the world we lived in. It'd be pretty funny. Anyway, I thought this was super fascinating and uh, something I'd never, never thought about. Not a combination of words I'd seen either. self -eratus. So there's the link to that if anyone's interested. It's kind of a cool read. I think I'll I'll finish it later. But it's pretty interesting to see. And Marshall, good buddy Marshall, interviewed in that. And it's funny, yeah, yeah. So Wayne Peterson did the Massachusetts one as mentioned earlier, and he he led one of the first bird walks I ever went on. I know Wayne really well. Did a bunch of CBCs. It's a small world. But pretty cool. Um, okay. That's all I found for kind of interesting birding news this week. I don't know. Has anyone else run into any birding news that's not like a unusual sighting this week? I got a bunch of sightings next, but anyone else have any news bits they, they ran into? If you, if you do think of something, just drop it in at some point and I'll, uh, I'll take a look when we get there. Cool to see. Okay. 
Time for some weird sightings this week. Um, got some, a couple broad phenomena, and what else do we have? Oh yeah, a couple continuing rarities, one weird thing. A rare bird from 12 and a half years ago, actually. Just kind of cool. Um, so one thing that was kind of cool that I know I've been keeping an eye on and a bunch of folks have been looking for is there's a bunch of slaty-backed gulls um, turning up in North America right now. So all the red dots are within the last month. Um, so pretty decent year so far, it looks like, for, for slaty back. So if anyone has a bunch of gulls near you, no matter where you are, because they're getting all the way down as far. Oh, I've been to this landfill. Um, as far down as South Carolina. That's a nice ladybug. Um, wherever those gulls, you could find ladybugs. Central California's got some. There's always some here every winter. California has too many birds. Need to nerf California. It's needed. Um, but yeah, keep an eye eye out for ladybugs. If you're, uh, if you're looking around, seeing what you can find. Mm, I'm not so sure about that one. Hmm, I need to follow up on that one later. We shall see. Um, cool. Oh, wonder you're in Madison, New York, Fidgern. That's cool. That must be this one. Oh, this is the one you were texting me about, Drew, right? That's a ladyback gull. They're so dumpy. Yes, they they have a dumpy. But yeah, look at that. So some good good critters. Niagara. It's a good gulling spot. I always like when there's just one out in the middle of nowhere. This New Brunswick one one record oh cool a sub adult it's a cool bird the pale eyes nice so if you got gulls near you keep an eye out if you're looking for the big round round bird very pot bellied look Pink legs, the streaking on the, the head, densest around the eye, pretty fine scale bill. It's kind of medium gray back. It's like a little bit more leaden than a, um, a lesser black backed in, in my mind. Um, then this big white crescent here in the tertials, and white spots in the primaries. And in flight, you'll get this string of pearls trailing edge. Sulfuratus, I, I don't. I, I do, uh, I haven't seen, is Punk Birder still putting stuff out? I, uh, when I was like in my teens and um, kind of really going hard on birds, I, I loved the Punk Birder stuff. It was hilarious. And I, I actually gotten to know Alex Lees pretty well, um, birded with him a fair amount. And uh, it was funny hearing some of the, the off the record Punk Birder stories or even Sometimes even funnier than the ones they wrote. Yeah, they do great stuff. I'll have to look at that later. Thanks for that. So yeah, keep an eye out for Slady Backs. It's PSA number one. PSA number two, I'm seeing a, a big hole here in Germany of uh, ringneck ducks um, in eBird. This is a pretty cool thing. This is a Alex actually told me about this, that there's a bunch of um, kind of new world ducks showing up in um, Western Europe right now, which is kind of cool. I'm always amazed at what people find out here on the Canaries, um, just in the Azores rather. Um, just a bunch of ringneck ducks crossing the ocean. Um, pretty cool to see. And I think there were a bunch of lesser scop as well. Um, if I remember correctly, pretty cool to, uh, to see that. So. Yeah, a few of those, but pretty cool to see. So keep an eye out for in your local duck pond for something weird from from the Americas, if uh, if you're out there. Um, 
The next one is, is a pretty cool bird that's another continuing bird, uh, but something that just blows my mind. And I guess I guess this is the time of year to talk about Arctic gulls, because we've been talking about ivories and rosses, I think, every day. But this, this rosses gull over here on the side um, is actually apparently even saying, I am a rosses gull, uh, which is very helpful for identification. Um, I, apparently they only do that in Belgium. I've never seen it, but maybe I haven't seen enough yet. Uh, but man, imagine seeing a Ross's gull like this. And it's been there for since December 1st, I think. Um, which is pretty insane. Um, and I mean, just the heaven for a birder. And, uh, so this is just from a, an article about it, but the photos that people have been getting are just like amazing just what a another just perfect bird cute beautiful cutiful <laughs> i don't really know what it's eating there but it looks interesting i'm gonna move on from that one you can almost hand feed it ah oh, that sounds amazing have you have you been over must be a little bit of a haul from from germany but man for a bird like this ah oh. What a bird. I really, yeah, I love this mantle pattern on these young ones with just the super bold, but nice edge there and the dark trailing edge. Super cool. Man, I didn't even realize we're just looking at a bunch of gulls. I regret nothing. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I went every few days. That sounds awesome. I would. Why not? Oh, man. That's so cool. So keep an eye. There's been a few of those around as well. Definitely not as many. But I, th I thought there was another one. Wasn't there one in France, I think? And then there, there have been some. Maybe not. It's just the one in Belgium. And then none in the U.S. right now. Not yet. Pretty cool bird. Okay, then this was one that, that I thought was, was pretty cool. Um, that was one of those, like, come to light after a, a long time. So this is the first ever horned puffin from normally Alaska, Eastern Russia, North Pacific. Um, that it was in Norway. That was photographed in Norway in 2009. And it wasn't reported until this week. <laughs> so the, the, this this had, had two things for me. One was the fact that I no longer am going to feel guilty about waiting like a day or two to report something. Um, or, or even a few hours. As long as it's not 14 years, could be, could be better. 13 years, I guess. Um, and then, I don't even remember what the second one was. We may never know. But this is so cool. It's... Uh, just obviously a slam dunk and this is a big um yeah a, a big seabird colony of thousands and thousands of breeding alcids um so it makes sense but pretty cool so next time you're editing your photos take a second look see what you can find i know i've heard tales of at least half a dozen um first ever records for for entire countries being found by folks just looking through photos uh, after the fact so you never know what's in there. Kind of cool. That was pretty funny. Um, so that's the last of the rarities and stuff that I've heard of this this week that were kind of interesting. The stellar sea eagle is still there in, in Maine. Um, stuff like that. Has anyone else heard of any interesting rare birds near them? Seen anything interesting in the last week or so? Trying to think of other things that have come come out this week, but I haven't really heard of anything too crazy. I think the the bat falcon is still in Texas, which has been big for U.S. Canada listers, ABA listers. Brambling, nice. Oh yeah, the sooty inquiries. Yeah, self I I looked at the sooty photo um, in the the rarity kind of roundup section last week, but I didn't know the quarries was the first. Ever. That's that's super cool. Oh, Brambling. That's a fun bird. 
Oh, cool. INAT. I love INAT map, maps. They're, uh, I'm actually, um, so my, my day job, I, I work um, helping with um, stuff around eBird, and uh, we meet with the INAT folks every month. Um, so meeting with them tomorrow. They're, they're super cool. My big thing on INAT has been moths. I have like 7,000 INAT hobs of moths or something. I think like 1,100 species, 1,200 species now or something like that. It's pretty fun. Yeah, couch lifers, Seth, definitely. Super cool. There's some stuff out there. Yeah, mothing is remarkably fun. I thought it was going to be... I always kind of looked down on it and thought it was super boring, but uh, once I finally looked at it, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, cool. Well, I got a couple tidbits, of, like last little birding things. Look at the weekend forecast, and then I got gear and unboxing stuff. This was amazing. I saw this on... Uh, someone's sent me this on Facebook, I think, this week. Um, I don't really do much on social media outside of getting back into it to talk to folks about the stream. But um, I don't know if folks have ever been familiar with uh, the subspecies albedus of northern goshawk, but there's a, a wild naturally occurring goshawk subspecies that looks like this. Basically like a white jeer falcon version of um, goshawks that is only in like eastern Siberia um, that is obviously almost never seen by birders and <laughs> these photos with it interacting with a stellar sea eagle too are are so topical but this this person uh, or in this single list there's two species on it goshawk and stellar sea eagle both of them at nests within 200 meters of each other um, and they're just like tangling and fighting but yeah look at this thing it's a white goshawk i'm i'm it's amazing i'd heard of them before but i'd never like i'd never been impacted by photos like this quite so it's just the craziest thing yeah yeah it looks like it's leucistic apparently this is this is the subspecies there and this is kind of the standard patterning it's uh, amazing and yeah fighting talon to talon with the sellers like that's just insane and here's what a stellar seagull nest looks like. Pretty cool. I love this shot. Man, that'd be a fun place to be. So yeah, here's your uh, moment of zen for the day. Look at this thing. Time to go to Siberia. Life goals. Super cool. I'll drop that link in chat too, because that one just blew my mind. Um, that's my last, that's my only moment of Zen for bird stuff. Um, super quick weekend forecast stuff. It's going to be brutally cold again across a bunch of Northern, um, so 7 a.m. on Saturday. Um, move my camera. So 7 a.m. on Saturday. And... Let's look at precip then as well. Okay, as long as you're not in like Wisconsin or Michigan, you should be fine um, on Saturday for rain-wise stuff. And then Sunday. I'm excited for when this gets to migration season. This is actually interesting to look at. Probably shouldn't even look at it right now. Um, yeah, you want to burn Jefferson County on Saturday? Drew, let's, let's look at how cold it's going to be. Thanks for stopping in, Sulfuratus. Yeah, minus 20. No, thank you. Um, yeah, Sunday, a little bit warmer. Some places colder than others. Same kind of deal. Um, this The forecast thing does, does make me, or does remind me that there's going to be some really cool new changes coming to... Uh, um, bird cast this spring for this migration season uh, that are going to have a lot of new novel um, kind of ways of displaying what's going on with nocturnal migration and um, kind of what's happening throughout the night. So it should be cool. Yeah, I love this website. Um, I'll, I'll drop the link in chat. It's uh, called Venture Sky or 
Ventuski. I, I don't really know how to pronounce it. I usually just like calling it Ventuski because it sounds more fun. Um, but it's a Czech website, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and I just love their visualizations. It's all totally free. Um, and you can do so when you're doing stuff for uh, like nocturnal migration and you're curious about like wind direction, you can do wind speed at elevations as well to understand like thousand meters is what I usually look at, um, what, what the patterns actually are for winds at elevation and such. It's a super nice website. Um, so that's the US and then Europe. Let's see what we got. Temperature, not sea surface. Whatever's going on here. There we go. Um, Chile and Scandinavia. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, yeah, going to be tough if you're in southeastern Europe. Kind of both days. Norway looks pretty bad on Sunday, too. Saturday is probably going to be better across most. Yeah, it's, it's similar to windy maps. Um, I, I personally like it better. I just like the colors and layout and UI better. And it's really cool, too. I, um, I just love, like, the ability. I mean, you can even just zoom out and see, like, worldwide what's happening right now. It just kind of blows my mind. It's pretty cool. Um, anyway, link, link for that's in chat. Um, so that's all I got for like screen sharing stuff like that. So I got some gear, gear stuff right now. Um, it's kind of the, the last thing I have. So obviously there's gear required for like an, an indoor setup. Um, and so what I have is like the SLR that I use for bird photos here. Um, and then a shotgun microphone right here. That, that's what I use for bird recording as well. <laughs> yeah, I showed maps and apps, a map app. I put that on my put that on my resume. I like that. Um, so this is kind of the, the setup here. And then for mobile, so the thing, I talked about this a little bit a few weeks ago, but like the, the main thing for mobile in my mind is the need to both show the point of view from what you're looking at as a birder, as well as um, being able to look through optics. Because being able to like look close, I mean, it's like going birding without binoculars or, or a, a, a good camera. Like, would you do that? I, I don't think so. Um, so that second part is the hard part to crack. And I think I have a way, way to crack that. Um, but first off, for the point of view, I'm, I'll have a, a shoulder mounted. I'm not going to get all done up in this today, um, but in, in a few weeks, I'll be trying this somewhere that I'll tell you in a bit. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll have basically um, a shoulder mounted GoPro that has a directional microphone on the top here. So it'll be like the, the same way that when you're listening in a direction and you like tilt your head, it will actually help focus on that. So it should provide like listening conditions similarly to if you're standing there. Um, so this will just be shoulder mounted and go down via a cable to a switcher um, that allows me to toggle back and forth um, between my um, GoPro and uh, an SLR as well, actually for me, a mirrorless, but like a, a high tech camera that makes it so that I can have the GoPro while I'm walking around. If I see something interesting, I raise the camera up and then hit toggle on my, on my waist where I have the switcher. And then it just flips to a 500 millimeter view through a camera with image stabilization that in my testing is pretty stable. Um, and so you got to carry a bag around with a, a power pack to power all these things. And you're broadcasting from a phone and, and stuff. And I'm not going to go through all of it tonight, but it definitely, I've spent a lot of time ordering stuff on Amazon and getting the wrong cable and having to send it back. And it is what it is, but oh, Georgia Audubon. Oh yeah. Yeah. So cell phone to me, it's like 
it lacks this, I don't know if elegance is the right word, but like th th there's some challenges between, <laughs> between these things. How much time? Um, probably more time than I should admit, but I've, I've been toying around with this idea and setups for six plus months, probably off and on. Um, and big props to uh, Doc, uh, Dr. WD40, who's another birding streamer who really helped with a lot of the ideas for this. I don't have a setup the same as his. I've tweaked some things for what I think I want to do, um, but it's really based largely on his setup, which is which has worked really well for him, I think. Um, and then the the piece that I got, I just got delivered, that I think is going to be fun that's also going to be able to be hooked up to this. So I'll have the GoPro for the human point of view. Um, I'll have the through camera lens for that. And I will have uh, the ability to hook up a drone. Um, so I just, I just ordered this drone and I haven't opened it yet, but I, I have a way um, to be able to, to do that. So, and it's one of these little like micro drones um, so I should be able to just like um, basically have it in a pocket. And if I'm in a place where drones are, are usable, it's not one of the ones that requires like um, serious permitting and limitations and stuff like that. I'm sorry, this is probably way too dank, um, too loud. Um, but uh, should be able to basically just fly up a drone and be able to see, see what's going on. Oh, look at this. Am I the only one that just enjoys getting packages? Whoa. That's crazy. This is the whole thing. This is an entire drone. That's amazing. Huh. That's pretty cool. That's yeah, my first first drone. Um, so I, I have never I have never droned before. But um, obviously I have to play around with it a bit more. But I mean, how small it is when it's stored, I think, shows how um, should be able to just carry it around and go from there. But it has uh, it has four 4K video um, and a 10 kilometer range um, where it'll transmit back to me. So I could put this up and 30 minute battery life. So it could conceivably just be at a spot and be like, oh, let's let's just go look over there pop this thing up, fly it over there, and even fly miles um, and go go check something out and come back and just be able to have it in my pocket between that, um, which sounds pretty cool. So I'm excited for this. I think this will be a fun a fun thing that hasn't, hasn't been done in this arena yet either. So obviously I have no idea how to use it yet, but uh, it'd be pretty cool. We'll get that hooked up. Uh, everything else in here is just accessories. Oh, th th this is worth worth looking at. That's what I saw. I saw on the cover. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't open that right by the mic. My bad. It's like a. I don't know. It feels like some weird Xbox controller or something like that that uh, you can fly it with. And it's got all sorts of um, commands that you can run. I don't know, do, do any, does anyone here have drones? I've, I've never, like I said, had a drone before. Um, but you can like give it GPS routes and it'll run the routes and like pan around specific points and stuff like that. Um, so it seems like it should be a pretty, pretty interesting tool just to get more footage um, and give a new perspective that I think would be really cool um, just to, I have a few ideas, I don't wanna spoil them yet. But um, I have some, some ideas of what I think could be fun at specific places. Um, and for at least a, a little while this spring, 
going to be able to go. Oh yeah, illegal most. Of, yeah, almost all of New York City for sure. Yeah, you can't fly them within certain um, within distance of airports, um, and uh, in many cases around people if it's specific park regulations stuff like that. But the thing about this is this is so small that it is um, you don't need a lot of the permits and you don't have a lot of the same restrictions because it's like it's insanely light. Um, like it's definitely it's just lighter. It's actually lighter than my phone for sure. Um, so it's uh, it'll be pretty cool to uh, to give that a whirl, see how it goes. So anyway, that's some of the gear, and I'll I'll definitely talk more about the gear once I have it out and running, and I'm sure parts of it will uh, will fail and and see how it goes. But I think the combination of the GoPro with the microphone on it, the 500 millimeter lens that I can toggle to. Um, and then the ability to deploy a drone um, if I need to should be should be pretty fun. So for spring, I'll be able to go for at least a little while to um, coastal Texas again, um, High Island and uh, Bolivar Peninsula, Bolivar Flats, and be able to uh, poke around there and do some live birding. Hopefully, kind of be kind of think of it as like first first on the scene for spring migration in North America at least, uh, where a lot of the stuff is kind of hitting there first. So. Um, my hope is within, within a little while, I'll be able to be down there and be able to do some live broadcasts and see how it goes. So it should be pretty fun. Um, Seth, my main camera lens combo, I actually just upgraded, um, about two months ago, uh, to the Canon R5. So mirrorless, I went from SLR to mirrorless, um, and I'm using the new Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens made for the R5, um, which so far has seemed really nice. Um, before that, I was using a Canon 1DX and a 500 millimeter Canon lens, um, the, which combined weighed like 16 pounds, I think, or something, um, and was a little bit, a little bit chunky. But but now, um, yeah. So so the old the old rig is here. So this is the old rig, which is a little bit hefty and a little bit to carry around. Um, and this is a five. This is the new 500. So this is the the 100 to 500. So it's crazy to me. So this is it extended. Like this is a 500 millimeter lens. I mean the same size as like the classic 400s and and stuff like that. And so far, it's been a really nice image stabilization, really nice uh, image quality, autofocus speed, and all that. So, um, would recommend so far. Uh, it took like a month to get after I ordered it, but it was uh, it's been worth it so far. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, R five has been really cool so far. So yeah, I don't know how many folks are camera camera folks in here, but most birders tend to be at least somewhat, and um, it. Uh, the R5 has this crazy thing called animal eye autofocus, where basically it detect uses computer vision like Merlin does to identify birds to detect the eyes of what is in um, a uh, just what's in the the frame and focus on it. So like you pan with whatever. Um, is flying by or running by and it just stays on the eye, which is like, at least for me, like a dream, what I've always wanted to have happen. So it'd be pretty cool. Um, on eBird, is it possible to search for cameras on Macaulay? Uh, it is, it's not possible to, to filter by, by that. Um, kind of have to click through and, and see. Yeah, R5 is mad. Detects the eyes of diving birds, rolling seas. It, it's crazy. I don't know how it work, how it does that but the so far my only regret about the r5 is not having gotten one sooner um i feel like i resisted for a while but uh 1dx doesn't hold a candle to it it's pretty cool and the thing that i'm really excited about for um, streaming is that the r5 has in-body image stabilization and the new the 100 to 500 has really nice is and those combined make for a really stable handheld um, video experience even at 500 millimeters um, so i think it'll be really nice for that so 
exciting times. Well, that's that's all I got for the um, equipment preview, I think. Other than that, it's mostly cables and other stuff that I'll show in the future, I think. Um, anyone have any other equipment questions or thoughts while we're on the on the topic? Or anything else? Any other thoughts, questions, comments? Other than that, I think it's probably most of what I got. I guess while folks are gathering any thoughts that they have any, um, next week I I have two options. I Next week I can't do anything on either Thursday or Friday. I, I know and I, I need to get into a rhythm, but part of this is around um, just figuring out some, some travel things. And then the week after that I won't be able to stream. So next week I can do Wednesday or I can do nothing. I think I might do Wednesday. Um, even though it's just another day, maybe see who comes. Maybe it makes it um, makes it available for more folks. But um, if you want to join next week, um, follow. I'll drop exclamation point socials. Follow on whatever. I'll put it on on everything. But Twitter is probably the easiest. And also um, follow the stream. Should be down there. Um, if you haven't followed already, if you hit follow, you will make a Harlequin duck sing up here which is cool because they don't normally do that um lose out on performance stuff with micro four thirds smaller size is worth it yeah i mean everything definitely has a ah oh, thanks the weight you made a duck sing today you're a hero um uh yeah for micro four thirds and for other cameras it's all it's all i feel like trade-offs it sounds like there's probably a bunch of camera folks in here could be interesting just to have a stream sometime one of the ideas i've had is to have um several photographer friends of mine on and just have like a an ama ask ask me anything with just a bunch of bird photographers and see see what they think i don't know if folks here would be interested in that but that could be kind of fun filters on spotting scopes i've never heard of that nyc um could just be missing it out, but never heard of that. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for coming by. Um, share anybody to Thursday night or uh, wherever, whenever it is, wherever you might be. And yeah, I'll probably go live next Wednesday. Um, and then again, uh, into February, uh, looking to do more actual live birding, test out some of these things, take the drone for a spin, uh, see how that goes. So. Thanks, uh, and look forward to seeing you then. Follow the stream if you haven't yet, and uh, see you sometime. Have a good night. Have a good week. See you out there.